les garçons et les filles de mon âge Je me demande quand viendra le jour Où les yeux dans ses yeux Et la main dans sa main J'aurai le cœur heureux Sans peur du lendemain Le jour où je n'aurai plus du tout La en paix le jour où Moi aussi j'aurai quelqu'un qui m'aime What would Napoleon have said? A peaceful invasion fleet made up of the World Rally Championship teams has set up camp on his island, Corsica. Ahead of those teams, three days and 18 special stages on the twisty, abrasive asphalt of the island's mountain roads. This is the 11th rally of the 14 which make up the World Championship, and four drivers are still in with a chance of taking the title. A Spaniard, a Finn, and two Britons. You're one of the, the few non-French drivers to have won on Corsica. What does it take to win here? It's uh, okay, a little bit of experience, but not a lot. It's uh, quite straightforward. It's uh, just really adapting your driving style more than, than experience, uh, and adapting to the sort of tarmac style of driving, uh, which is more important here because it's very twisty. Richard Burns arrived on Corsica just a point behind McRae, but a string of poor results meant Burns was feeling the pressure. The car is, is good, we know that, because it's, it's fast, but of course when we've had problems on the last uh, three events, which have caused either you know not being able to challenge for the lead or, or win the rally, but and sometimes retiring, then of, of course you're going to feel like you're, you're losing points and, and you're wasting points, so that, that's a fact. Four rallies without a problem doesn't mean you've got a perfectly reliable car, and four rallies with a problem doesn't mean you've got an unreliable one. Statistics don't work out like that. Um, I'm pretty confident that we'll have a good reliability record to the end of the season. The pre-event favourites were the Peugeot team, but the drivers' championship leader hadn't been nominated for manufacturer's points. His lack of experience on the event meant he was more than happy to leave it to his teammates. I have first time here, so it's uh, it's not really easy to fight fight with him. I think it's impossible, but uh, I do my best and, and we will see. The team would rely instead on two all-French pairings, Francois Delacour and Daniel Gratteloup in one car, Gilles Panizzi and his brother Hervé in the other. Panizzi hadn't competed on an event since the last all-asphalt rally in Spain in April, but he wasn't the only tarmac joker played by the teams. Italy's Piero Liati was entered in a third Ford Focus, while at Subaru, the joker, in every sense of the word, was the team's new signing, Peter Solberg. But Subaru had another race up its sleeve. Its second manufacturer-nominated car was driven by Simon Jean-Joseph, instead of Juha Kankinen. The rally of Corsica would be fought over 18 stages, six each day totalling around 80 miles of tortuous tarmac, with leg two based at Corte in the heart of the island, and leg three, a repeat of leg one, centred around the rally headquarters in Ajaccio. And at 8 o'clock sharp, with the sun yet to burn off the morning mist, championship leaders Marcus Gronholm and Timo Rautiainen dutifully led the crews off the start ramp. The British fans were up early as well to cheer on their heroes, with Colin McRae now second in the championship table, just two points adrift of Gronholm, and Richard Burns, a single point behind the Scot, with four rounds to go and everything to play for. For Gronholm on his Corsican debut, it was a tall order to expect him to be on the pace in a rally where local knowledge is an advantage. And true to form, he was only ninth fastest on stage one and ninth again on stage two. Richard Burns, though, surprised a few by going quickest on the day's opener and discounted any idea that his Pirelli tyres were at any disadvantage on the tarmac surface. After stage two, though, he was back in third, but still only 2.2 seconds off the lead. McRae was 2.4 seconds further back in fourth. And his focus teammate Carlos Sainz, 2.3 seconds behind him in fifth. It was that close.
Even Tommy Mackinnon, still in with a mathematical chance of retaining his world crown, got off to a better start than of late, and he rounded out the top six after the first two stages. But his teammate Freddie Leutz's brand new ex reg Mitsubishi Charisma didn't even get to the end of the first. Yeah, it was a big accident because we went a little bit off, like uh, without braking, nothing, just straight off, and uh, we flew, uh, we flew, flew a few meters in in the air and dropped down for 20, 30 meters. So it was a, a big impact. At least Petter Solberg made it through stage one, but a gearbox fault meant less than a mile was driven competitively. And Solberg was soon back in a Jaxio, explaining what had happened to his new bosses. Now it was an electric uh, problem with the gearbox and uh, what can you do when something like that uh, can happen, it's not easy. A bitter disappointment for the young Norwegian and a premature end to Solberg's Subaru debut. Hyundai's Kenneth Eriksson made it as far as stage two when he, like Loitz, discovered how unforgiving the Corsican roads can be when your tyres aren't gripping properly. Shoot, you the curb. Ten kilometers before the end of the stage, we, we had no thread left, you know, it was the steel on the tires, and uh, we, we missed the braking point then because of that, and, and we, we, we hit, uh, hit the bank a little bit, so we, we snapped uh, the wishbone off the car, you know, and then we had a double puncture as well, and we, we had to struggle really to come out of the stage, uh, it took a long time, and, uh, but we, 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 we got it going again, and then the police stopped us on the road section because we had two flat tires, you see. So he wasn't able to come to the service, otherwise we could have been able to come here. No such dramas for the Peugeots, however. Burns fastest time on stage one had caught them napping, but on stages two, three and four, Francois Delacour was second, then quickest, then second again, to lead the rally by 2.1 seconds, as the cars headed for service at Ajaxio Airport. His teammate Gilles Panizzi was the man in second place after setting the fastest time on stages two and four. Despite the five-month layoff, Panizzi clearly had the bit between his teeth. His stage two win had come even after catching the limping Ericsson on the stage. Even though the rally was just four stages old, it was already clear that the 206s were in a class of their own. The gap between Panizzi and third-placed Carlos Sainz was now over eight seconds but it seemed the Frenchman was a little surprised at his pace. We are in Corsica, and uh, I like very well this rally, and uh, all the drivers drive very fast here, in this condition. The, the times between the cars is, is OK. It's uh, going well for Peugeot. Uh, Gilles and me both uh, were in front, but uh, you know, with this sort of weather, we can get everything in the stage in the next stages. And, uh, I hope uh, it will be dry because uh, at the moment I start with a slick tire. Alistair McRae wasn't hitting any walls with his Hyundai, but it wasn't turning into the corners very well, and by the end of the day he was a lowly 16th. The Seats were both running strongly, slowed slightly by niggling little problems, but Didier Oriol lay ninth. With young Tony Gardemeister 11th on his Corsican debut. Mackinnon was still charging hard in sixth, flying his Mitsubishi in spectacular style. Marcus Gronholm was beginning to set more competitive times, but he still lay outside the points down in eighth, trying to work out how best to attack this specialised event. It's difficult. Uh, new rally for me and a uh, lot of corners you can go faster, but... Uh, <laughs> When you go first time in the rally, it's not so easy to attack. Alistair's not been the best of days for you so far, has it? No, we're suffering quite badly from understeer, and it's just making it very difficult to push with the car at all. Didn't you have some kind of gearbox problem as well? Yeah, we had uh, a gearbox go. We lost fifth gear in the second stage this morning, so they had to change a, a gearbox at the last service. French tarmac specialist Simon Jean Joseph was keeping his Subaru well away from the rocks and lay seventh, two places and 36 seconds behind team leader Burns. Oh 
McRae finally edged past his British rival on stage five to move up to fourth, but both were being eclipsed by a very on-form Carlos Sainz. about the local heroes and their flying Peugeots, apart perhaps from some local wildlife. Before I had uh, two big pigs in the middle of the road and a very narrow part of the stage. While Delacour was slightly delayed, his less experienced teammate Gilles Panizzi took the lead at the end of the day with his fourth stage win to his teammate's one. Peugeot first, Peugeot second. How do you feel? Good, very good. Uh, it was difficult uh, when I beginning this morning because after six months, six months without competition, it's not so easy to to drive uh, like like the first first driver. But uh, my feeling is better and better. And uh, in the last stage, okay, I drive. I drive. Well, so I think if it's raining, if you look at the sky, it could be tomorrow. And I think it's much better to, to start in second position on the road because you never know the speed, you never know if you lose time, you never know how you have to drive when it's raining like that. And then I will get uh, um, Jill's time, intermediate time, which is much better for, for me. At times like this, do you think, well, the two Peugeots really aren't threatening me for the Drivers' Championship, so my battles with Carlos and with Richard? Yeah, that's the main thing, as long as I can keep in front of them. The Peugeots can do what they want, really. Obviously, we keep, we keep the pressure on as much as we can and hopefully we make a mistake or have a problem. Something like 25 seconds down on Francois and Gilles at the end of the day, is that a problem? It is a problem, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot we can do about it, though. I mean, I've, I've been trying pretty hard all day and if they, if they are that much faster, then uh, at the moment I don't, I don't have a response unless we find something with the car. Um, we've been thinking things we can try and whatever, but... At the moment, not a lot to do. So, six seconds split the Peugeots at the end of leg one, with the chasing pack headed by Sainz, a further ten adrift. Less than ten, however, covered third to sixth, emphasising the pace of the leading pair over the first 80 miles. First and second places this evening are held by French drivers in two French cars on the French round of the World Championship. To say the locals were happy this evening would be something of an understatement. Three of the four Drivers' Championship contenders, meanwhile, are scrapping for third place tonight, but the days belong to Peugeot. Two more legs remain, remember, but the storm clouds are gathering. The thunderstorm, in fact, hit the island before nightfall, so leg two would start wet at the very least. Six stages based around the airfield at Corte made up the second leg, with another 80 miles of competition high in the mountains in the centre of the island. The day began damp, with mist and low cloud shrouding the mountain tops, so tyre choice would yet again be a major factor. Panizzi, now running first on the road, chose soft intermediate tyres for the first pair of stages, and his decision proved to be the correct one. Fastest on stage seven, at 20 miles the longest of the event, he extended his lead to nearly nine seconds. The older, supposedly more experienced Frenchman had opted for wet tyres and immediately lost nearly three seconds. The next stage was drying out, and so Delacour could expect to lose even more time. Fate, however, would intervene. Richard Burns was ninth fastest on stage seven, also on intermediates, but his Pirellis were now no match for the Michelins of the three Peugeots and the three Fords which headed the timesheets. Piero Liati, still getting used to the focus, was sixth quickest on the day's opening stage, nearly eight seconds ahead of Burns. Colin McRae and co-driver Nicky Grist were third fastest, unable to match the pace of the two Peugeot drivers, but McRae's battle was with Burns and Sainz, remember. Sainz himself was still just ahead of McRae on the leaderboard, but stage seven saw the Spaniard narrowly avoiding a huge accident, lightning quick reflexes saving the day. This block was what prevented the Ford from tumbling down the mountainside. Stage 8 was cancelled by the organisers after safety fears, so Delacour and the others on wets could breathe a sigh of relief and head for service. By now, the two Peugeots were over 22 seconds clear of the rest of the field. So, what was the secret? Because they know the stages very well, 
because maybe they did a tire choice which was more convenient to the to the surface by the way we have a very good partnership with uh, Meteo France so we have somebody here in charge of telling us uh, like in Roland Garros it, it would be raining and in how many minutes in uh, the, what time and where so this is a good help to us but mainly I think that the car is doing very well and Gilles and Francois are going very fast it seems that we've got three rallies going on it's Peugeot's rally Fords and then everybody else um, it's quite clear to see that the Peugeot certainly have got it right here I don't think we're far away, don't get me wrong, but conditions weren't easy, they were quite wet, very slippery. Macklin had been a disappointing 10th fastest on that opening stage, but had the consolation that Burns, who he was chasing for 5th place, was only 2.5 seconds quicker. Unfortunately, with the road now dry for stage 9, he wasn't quite as lucky as Sainz was with the rocks. Crippled with a broken wheel, the Finn was quickly caught by Simon Jean Joseph's Subaru. He would lose a total of three minutes when forced to stop to change the rim, and he dropped from sixth to tenth. Having closed the gap to his teammate to just 1.7 seconds on the day's first stage, Colin McRae had been six seconds slower on the next and was determined to claw the deficit back. Rescuers were soon on the scene of what was obviously a serious accident. The focus had hit a tree before plunging to the bottom of a ravine and the roof was badly crushed. Although briefly unconscious, Colin was not seriously injured but needed to be cut free from the wreckage. A concerned Nicky Grist had escaped unharmed and helped direct the rescue operation while Colin's father Jimmy was also soon on hand to help out. After 40 minutes, Colin was finally extricated from the wreckage and stretched to safety lucky to have survived such a horrific crash. Oh. Uh, well, it appears that uh, Colin has a, a fractured cheekbone uh, and uh, extensive bruising to the rib cage, and uh, thankfully uh, no other injuries. It was yet another frightening accident in the history of a rally renowned for its unforgiving nature and the teams were in a sombre mood as they awaited the restart. You know, you're not generally going that fast but you're very quickly off the road and straight into something, either a drop or a wall. There's no, there's no in between. When the rally restarted it was well over an hour behind schedule. Sykes continued to head the pack but it was still a Peugeot 1-2. The lead, however, would have changed by the end of the day. Delacour was fastest on both stages 11 and 12, but Panizzi stalled his car on the start line of the day's last 10-miler, losing 13 seconds and the rally lead to his excitable teammate. After 12 special stages, just two tenths of a second separated the two Frenchmen. Everyone, it seemed, was predicting a Peugeot 1-2, except perhaps the drivers. Tomorrow, a big attack for everybody, for Gilles and me, and also Carlos is pushing hard, going so fast behind us. But uh, I think between Gilles and me, I would like rain, and we didn't get rain during the rally, just maybe a little bit this morning. And when it's dry, Gilles is going very, very quick. Francois has won world rallies before, you've not. Will you be able to sleep tonight? Yes, yes, no problem. No, no. Baby. Like a baby. <laughs> Carlos, it's going to be tough to catch the Peugeots tomorrow, but I'm sure you're going to try. Yes, we have to try at least to, to be there, just in case something happens, because still it's a uh, long day tomorrow and anything can happen in any moment.
Sainz was over 25 seconds behind the Peugeot Tussle, but was content to play the waiting game. Burns and Gronholm, meanwhile, were split by nearly 37 seconds. In the great scheme of things, of course, tonight's leaderboard is almost incidental. The day dominated by that horrific accident which befell Nicky Grist and Colin McRae. Happily, this evening they both appear to be OK, although Colin will need to spend the night in hospital. Yet again, this event shown that in Corsica, even the slightest mistake is cruelly punished. Leg three was identical to leg one. Six stages totalling just under 80 miles, based again around the service park at Ajaxio Airport. The day dawned moody and menacing, but there was no real threat of rain early on as Tommy Mackinnon launched his Mitsubishi into the first stage, an exact repeat of stage one two days earlier when his teammate Freddie Lloyd had destroyed his car. Make that two X-Reg Mitsubishis for the scrap heap. Both Tommy and Risto Manison Mackey emerged unscathed, but it was another monster accident. We came to the long ride Titans corner, which was, uh, I don't know, was it a little bit slippy beginning. It was not that far from the from the start and uh, just right before the corner car snap was there and, and the slide off. Repeating the stages obviously helped Marcus Gronholm as he went second fastest on that opening stage and was third fastest in another Peugeot 1-2-3 on the next. The Finns' improving pace was now putting Burns' fourth place under pressure as an over-cautious approach cost him 21 seconds on the day's opener. But at the same time, the Britons suddenly had Carlos Sainz's third place back in his sights as the Spaniard dropped over a minute on the very next stage with power steering failure. Sainz's lack of power steering meant that the pressure had suddenly been taken off the two Peugeots and the threat of team orders was now very real. Sure enough, the two Frenchmen were told that whatever happened, Panizzi would be allowed to win, with Delacour second. Unsurprisingly, Panizzi was delighted, while Delacour wasn't exactly overjoyed. Almost overlooked, however, was the fact that the team's other driver was now closing in on one of his rivals. Nine seconds behind Richard, it's now looking very interesting. <laughs> Yes, not bad, not bad. OK, still we have to go some stages, so there is a possibility to take him, but uh, calma, calma. <laughs> to start the stage, I realised I have no power steering, so that's it. I did the stage without power steering. So that's it for the battle with the two Peugeots, but what about the battle with Richard and Marcus? Yeah, it seems like uh, now we, we are battling for third position and they are not so far. So we will, we will, we will have to go flat out. I am leading, but uh, in any case, now I have to go slow down and don't take any risk and to accept the team order. For sure, it's not the sport, but you have to ac accept the, the interest. You're disappointed. Very, very. Over the last four stages, Gronholm's Persia would only beat Burns Subaru once. Simon Jean Joseph, meanwhile, was embroiled in a fight with Piero Liati. On this occasion, the Subaru driver would lose out, but Jean Joseph would get two valuable manufacturer's points. Driver points are what Richard Burns needs, and with the Peugeots cruising, he could finally top the timesheets again. Fastest on stages 15 and 16, Burns held off Gronholm to hold on to fourth place, the Finn finishing fifth. With only the last pair of stages remaining, the clouds moved in once again. Piero Liati hardly cared though. He and Carlo Casino would finish sixth on their first event in almost a year, while their colleagues Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya picked their way through the puddles to set the fastest time on the final stage. 
were very worried about the rain. What happened? Well, we just fight like hell the whole stage and, you know, a lot of moments and difficult stage. But OK, at the end it worked OK. We just had um, the difficulty getting the, the right setup of the car and the tyres. And uh, we've shown that when the combination, when it's correct, then we can be fast. And that, that gives us quite a lot of uh, encouragement. The correct combination in Corsica was, quite obviously, a French Peugeot 206 with a French driver and French tyres. The only team allowed to test on the island this year had obviously done their homework well, and even the rain couldn't spoil their day, as Panizzi led Delacour home, and the final stage times were transmitted to team boss Corrado Provera. 12, 55, 8. Yes. Before this, we won three rallies. The first was a, a dream. The second one was the confirmation. The third one was beautiful for Marcus in Finland. But still, um, only one car was capable to reach the podium, the top level of the podium, and the others had problems and so on. Here we are back in France to the French rally, and we are scoring the best possible result. We are delighted. <laughs> You've had to wait a long time for this first victory. How long will you have to wait for the next one? Fifteen days. For some of them. Mille buts que va être salué cette première victoire de Gilles et Hervé Panizzi qui ont fait céder dans la deuxième classe. Delacour had eased back by over 30 seconds to ensure Panizzi's victory, yet he still had over half a minute in hand from Sainz in third. Three points to Richard Burns puts him back ahead of Colin McRae in the driver's standings, with Carlos Sainz now making it a real four-way fight, but Mackinnon's mathematics looking all but hopeless. In the manufacturer's table, Peugeot's 16-point maximum score leapfrogs them ahead of Subaru into second spot. Peugeot's fourth win of the year then, giving Gilles Panizzi his first ever World Rally victory. But the home team's 1-2 has almost been eclipsed by worries about the event's organisation and safety, which will have to be addressed if the rally's to keep its place as a round of the World Championship. However, three more rounds of this year's series remain, and the good news is that Colin McRae's already talking about an appearance on the next, the Rally San Remo in Italy, in three weeks' time.